This lecture is presented by John Moffat of Open Tuition. For other free lectures, visit opentuition.com. Uh, we're working through the hybrid paper, September, December 2015, for paper F5. And now let's look at question three. Look at the requirements. Uh, part A, calculate the total material mix variance and the total material yield variance for OBC for the last quarter. So it's immediately obvious what sort of question it is. It's variances, but there's always a, a very good chance of one of the questions being variances. And if it's variances, um, it's always like to be either mix and yield or planning and operational. This is mix and yield. Uh, part B, sorry, so part A is the arithmetic. We'll go through it in a moment. Part B, a little bit of written for three marks. Using the information, the question suggests three possible reasons why an adverse material yield variance could arise. It's only three marks, but all the same, make sure you leave enough time, even if it means not quite finishing part A, to at least write something for part B. Um, because you should be able to think of something without... Um, I haven't done any calculations at all. Anyway, let's make a start. Part A. The um, Organic Bread Company makes a range of breads for sale direct to the public. So we're making bread. The production process begins with workers weighing out ingredients on electronic scales, placing them in a machine for mixing. The worker, uh, a worker then manually removes the mix from the machine and shapes it into loaves by hand after which the bread is placed in an oven for baking. All baked loaves are then inspected by OBC's quality inspector before they're packaged up and made ready for sale. Any loaves which fail the inspection are donated to the local food bank. Well, it's all very interesting, but of course for the arithmetic, that's really completely irrelevant. For the arithmetic, what matters is the next bit. The standard cost card, for mixed bloomer, one of its most popular loaves is as follows. Flour, white flour, whole grain flour, yeast. That's the standard cost card, so a total of 610 grams. Um, and it should cost $1.34 per loaf. Budgeted production was 1,000 units, although actual production was only 950 units. The total actual quantities used and their actual costs were, well, I'm not going to read the table, but there they are, kilos, dollars, total 570.5 kilos. <coughs> now we are asked here for the uh, mix variance and the yield variance. Very much learning rules, although appreciate because it's just mix and yield, they're not asking for a price variance. Any costings will be at standard cost. I'm not interested in uh, what the actual costs were. That would be the price or cost expenditure variance. Uh, secondly, although there's only one correct answer for this, uh, there are several ways you can show your workings. You know, stick to whatever way you've learned. I'll do it the way I do in uh, my lectures. I think it's for me, it's the easiest, quickest way of doing it. Doesn't matter as long as, obviously, you get the right answer. But at the same time, do show your workings. I keep saying the final answer gets virtually no marks at all. The marks are for your workings. The markers realise that you can do it different ways. But as long as you're going about it a, a, a sensible way, you'll get most of the marks. If you're just sticking figures all over the place, Something goes wrong, the markers can't tell. Anyway, let's do it. Um, I'll do the mixed variance first. And I'll say I'll do it the way I do in um, the lectures. So for the mixed variance, we take the actual mix and compare it with the standard mix. And for the reasons I said a moment ago, we cost out, at, in both cases, at standard cost. Uh, 
And so uh, we've got white flour. We've got whole grain. By all means abbreviate as long as it's clear what we're doing. And the actual mix, rightly or wrongly, we bought 408.5 kilos of white, 152 of whole grain, 10 of yeast. So that's how many kilos uh, uh, we bought and that's how we mixed it. How should we have mixed it? Well, for that total of 570.5, if we'd mixed it the right way, if you look back at the cost card, for every 610 grams in total, 450 should have been white flour. So the white flour should have been this proportion, 450 out of 610, should have been that proportion of the total, which is what? Multiplied by 570.5, and I get 420.9. Uh, similarly, whole grain. Um, for every, out of 610 total, it should have been 150. So 150 out of 610. That proportion, 150 divided by 610 times 570.5 is 140.3 and finally yeast it should have been 10 out of 610 so 570.5 it comes to 9.4 or 3 I'm not worried about a tiny bit of rounding but it does now add up so here's how we mixed it that's how we should have mixed it Cost out at standard cost in both cases. So white flour, it should have been 180. So 408.5 times the dollar 80 should have been 735.3. Whole grain, 152. The standard cost is 220 a kilo. 334.4. And yeast should have been 10, 20 a kilo. 10 times 20 is 200. So the actual mix, that standard cost would have cost us 1269.7. Whereas standard mix at standard cost, uh, 420.9, white flour is $1.80. Uh, 140.3 whole grain of 220 and finally yeast 9.3 at 20 186 so had we mixed it the right way it would have come to 1252.3 the difference between the two is our mixed variance. We should have spent 1252.3, we actually spent 1269.7, so we overspent by 17.4 adverse. which is marginally different than the uh, examiner's answer, but that's due to roundings. Um, it wouldn't lose me any marks. Uh, I said a minute ago, slightly different from the examiner's answer, but that is purely rounding. Wouldn't lose any marks. Uh, it's clear from my workings what I'm doing. Um, that, that would get the full marks for that bit. However, that's the mixed variance. We also want to know the yield variance. And again, several ways you can get the same answer. Yet again, I'll do it the way um, I do in the lectures. Of the yield variance, therefore, we compare a standard mix for the actual total input. And what I mean by that, um, we've got white flour, we've got whole grain. 
we've got yeast. Uh, it's what I just worked out. You see, um, uh, we actually input a total from the question of 570.5 kilos. And if we'd have mixed it in the right way, because I'm no longer interested in the mixed variance, it would have been 420.9 kilos of white flour, 140.3 kilos of whole grain, 9.3 kilos of yeast. So for the um, our actual total input of 570 kilos, that's how it would have been at standard mix. However, to check the yield variance, we will compare with what we should have put in for the actual production. So let me write it, but then make it clear what I mean. The standard mix for standard input. And what I mean here, you see, we're looking at, did we put too much in or too little? If you look at the cost card, in total, we should have put in 610 grams for every loaf. How many loaves, how many units did we produce? We actually produced, uh, budget production was 1,000, actual was only 950. We produced 950. And so, how many kilos should we have put in? It should have been 610 grams in total for every loaf. And so in kilos, we should have input 579.5. Have I got that right? 950, that's 610 per loaf. Yeah, 579.5. <coughs> So that's what we would have put, uh, expected to input. And now should it have been mixed? Well, either take those proportions again or straight from the table. For 950 loaves, whole flour should have been 0.45 kilos, 427.5. Uh, whole grain, again, it's 950 loaves. It should have been 0.15 a kilo. Um, kilos of whole grain and finally yeast for 950 loaves at 10 grams it should have been 9.5 kilos and so we look at standard mix but we're comparing how much we put in of everything as against what we should have put in we cost it out at standard cost so that's a bit of arithmetic. Um, standard mix to actual input we've already done. So I may as well just copy the figures. We did it here. So at standard cost, 757.6, 308.7, A total of 1252.3. Um, for the um, standard input, Let's cost it out. White, 427.5 at standard cost of 180 a kilo would be 769.5. 142.5 times 220 a kilo. And finally, 9.5 for yeast at standard cost of 20 a kilo comes to a total of. Uh, one two seven three. Exactly that you could have found out slightly faster, of course, because how much should nine hundred and fifty loaves have cost us? Each loaf, the standard cost is one thirty four. Nine fifty loaves. It's one two seven three. So there are various ways you can speed up, but I'm sticking to sort of the same approach as the lecture. But as a result, what is the yield variance? Uh, have we put in the correct amount in total 
it would have cost 1273. We actually put in a bit less than we would have expected to put in. We've saved money and we've saved the difference 1273 minus 1252.3. Uh, we've saved 20.7. We've saved, so it's favourable. And again, that's uh, slightly different than the examiner's answer, but that is purely rounding. If you don't believe me, go through and do it to more decimal places. Uh, but bits of rounding don't matter. That would get full marks. Uh, and again, however you show your workings doesn't matter, but make sure... Uh, that your workings are clear. All right, so there's the seven marks of part A. Part B, using the information in the question, suggest three possible reasons why an adverse material yield variance could arise. Now, don't be put off here. I mean, this is completely separate from our calculations. We actually got a favourable yield variance, and that is correct. But part B, regardless of what you've got in part A, whether you've even done part A, whether it's, you've done it and it's right or it's wrong, to be fair to everybody, it's saying, if there was an adverse material yield variance, suggest three reasons. So, forget the... Uh, the figures we ended up with, yet again, the yield variance, in fact, is favourable. What would it mean if it was adverse? If it was adverse, it would mean that we were putting in too much material, too much flour, too much yeast, for the number of loaves that were actually produced. Or put it the other way around, if you want. Uh, if it was adverse, it would have meant for the material we, we put in, we weren't getting enough loaves out. So we've got to ask ourselves, how could that happen? How could it be that we were putting in loads of uh, flour and yeast, but getting fewer loaves than we should have done? Or, you know, it should have been, for every 610 grams, we should have got one loaf. Maybe. If it's adverse, maybe it's 700 grams to get one loaf. How could that happen? Well, the clues are there. The examiner does help you. When I was reading the um, through the question, the first two paragraphs weren't really of any relevance at all for part A. Didn't really need them. But now let's read it. We make a range of breads to sell direct to the public. It begins with workers weighing out ingredients on electronic scales, placing them in a machine for mixing. They then manually remove the mix from the machine and shape it into loaves by hand. So think about that. They're putting all this yeast and flour and whatever into a bowl or a machine. It mixes it, but then they take it out by hand and make it into loaf shapes. Now we said an adverse yield variance is when they're using too much material. Maybe what's happening is when they take it out of the bowl, they're leaving some behind. You know, think about it, you've got a bowl full of um, bread mixture. Ideally, you'll get every little tiny bit of mixture out to turn into a loaf, but if you leave a bit behind, you're wasting. So that could be one reason that there's material left in the mixing bowl. That was why the examiner gave you um, that bit of information to help you. So no relevance at all, apart really for part B. What did Gary Allen say then? It says, all baked loaves are inspected before they're packed up and made ready for sale. Any loaves which fail the inspection are donated to the food bank. And so, think about it again. 
we're putting in all this material, we should get out, I don't know, a thousand loaves, I'd say. But if some of them are defective for any reason, if they're not good enough, uh, and when they come to have the quality inspection, they throw them away. Again, we're putting in too much material for the loaves we end up with. So it could be um, defective loaves. Failing the inspection. Um, the examiner, I think, has given a couple of reasons why they might fail the inspection. In a sense, it's a, the same problem. But, you know, presumably we budgeted that some might fail the inspection. If too many fail it, we end up with an adverse variance. Anything else? I think those two should be very obvious. It took me a few minutes to think of a third, but there's one other bit of information which seemed fairly irrelevant, but maybe it isn't. Back to the um, second sentence. The production process begins with workers weighing out ingredients on electronic scales. Now, I suppose the scales are accurate, but it could have been. That's less likely, but the scales are not accurate. Uh, but I don't bracket because I think, you know, if it says electronic, I think we should assume that they are accurate. But they put the materials in, they take out the mix, they shape it into loaves by hand. Now, presumably, we already know every loaf should take 610 grams. But are they weighing each loaf? If they're shaping it by hand, and there's no mention of them then shaping it and then weighing it and check it 610, it could be that all the, they're making the loaves a bit bigger than they should be. And if each loaf is a bit bigger than it's supposed to be, they won't make as many loaves out of the material. They'll have an adverse variance. So it could be the loaves are being made too big. Now, say, so I thought that was a little bit less uh, obvious, but I think that's why the examiner mentioned these electronic scales. The material's going in, we're sure about, but there's no mention of the individual loaves uh, being weighed to check that they're not too big, or for that matter, too small. But if they're too big, we'd have an adverse variance. Okay, that was number three.